Please help yourself. Help I yourself. have a loss. Let's get it.
If you're standing on a major canal, take bridges to get to the real center, to the heart. And the second and the third thing is uh, these canals are made by hand, dig by hand. There were no machines in the past. So what they did, they dig the first canal, they start bu uh, building houses around, then the second canal, etc. And this is the result. 3,000, more than 3,000 of these houses are standing next to the canal, and since 2010 they're UNESCO World Cup. And we have got a special name for those houses. We call them canal houses. Uh, okay. Yep. But now I've got a more difficult question for you all. But still, if you know the answer, it's still easy. Now, what do you see on almost every top of each house? A host, exactly. A host, a host, right? Easy part, that's the question. Now it's a difficult one. Can any one of you tell me, what was the purpose of those hooks in the past? Moving things up, what kind of things? Furniture. Wrong answer. Is the right answer for nowadays, but not the answer for... Yeah, day. No, also not your boat. No. Bicycles. Also not. I give you a little hint. Look over there. What is written there? Ship Chandler's Warehouse. I'm gonna tell you. I'll give you some additional information and then you can uh, do another guess. We had a sailing company in the past, the Dutch East India Company. Conquering all over the world. I'm just wondering where are you all from? Where are you from? Tell me. Where are you from? Where are you from? From South Africa. San Francisco. Romania. Texas. Texas. Portland. Portland. From Holland. Locals. Russia. Russia. Colombia. Colombia. Same old Colombia. Seattle. No? Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, we have them on the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, you slept well last two nights. Or still hangover. Yeah, still hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go on. Are you? From the US. Many from the States. Okay. We had a sailing company. And we're conquering all over the world. And one of the most famous things is, I think, New York. Yeah? Peter Stuyvesant, on his boat, discovered New York. We call it New Amsterdam at that time. And after a while, we traded it for Suriname, a country in South of America, because we needed slaves and labor at it. And also, we went to the other part of the world, Indonesia, Colony of Holland, up to the Second World War. And also a little bit further, Australia. Part of Australia, New Zealand, founded by Abel Tasman. And that's why we've got the island on the east side of Australia called Tasmania. And we saw a lot of things over there. Spices, coffee, tea. And those things we bring back by boat. And, we, and they offload it. Whereas nowadays it's a station, a train station, into smaller boats and driving all these canals and selling it to the owner. We saw a ship chances warehouse. Houses are nowadays 99% of these floors are residential. But in the past it was something bigger. On street level, we have very small windows, which are mainly under, also under street level. It means there's a basement floor. First floor, high ceilings. It means there was a living floor. And all the floors above are the uh, warehouses. So, very good example over here, for example, you see a high ceiling, and then you look above, and you see three floors, even the top floors are four floors with very low ceilings. These were the warehouses, they were storing their goods. In those, in those floors. Um, and sometimes I got the question, why is it so difficult to you've got a basement floor? You can also store it there. True? The only problem is, wet. Many, many times, not wet exactly, but many times streets got floated in the past. And if your basement is under street level, it means that your basement got floated too. So your bags will get wet and useless. And somehow, and probably you've also mentioned something else, the houses they lean to the left and to the right. Have a look all, to the corner house on your left. Some houses lean more than others. This one is built in 1634, as you can see, and it leans a lot to the right. But why are, they, why are these houses leaning? One reason is the foundation. People start building houses 
They use 60 up to 80 wooden poles per pot. And then they find out, hey, my house is sinking because of the weight of the construction. And if the wooden poles didn't hit the sand layer in the ground before they started the construction, they were sinking till the moment it hit the sand layer. Don't be afraid if you stay in one of those houses, yeah, they will not collapse. But these hoops, you're using them nowadays for something else. We're using them for bringing up the furniture. As I told you, all these floors are residential. Yeah? And if you move, you want to bring your couch to the top floor. I don't know if you stay in one of those houses in an Airbnb, but you probably find out that the staircases are very narrow and very steep. Almost impossible to get your furniture through the staircase to the top floor. But there is a solution. And a solution called IKEA. You can go to the IKEA and you can buy furniture and this you can get through the staircase. But there's also something else, look on the left. You see this? This house is leaning forward, and it's safe. This is safe to leaning forward, and it's not the only one. Forward, leaning forward. Almost all of them are leaning forward. Can anyone of you tell me what is the purpose why they are leaning forward? Because this was on purpose. Big clouds, come on, help me. Not to break glass when you're lifting things up. Really? That's cool. Right answer here behind me. If you, it was not the glass, but it's the wall. But it's the same because they didn't have glass at that time. Uh, what happens if the wall is straight and you bring up your goods? If it's sweet, yeah, you just smash your wall. Back and spices will get open. And if you just hang, have a small angle and you're pulling it up, yeah, even if it's sweet, it will not hit your wall. Right? It's not always that difficult, eh? I told you. That's smart. So, it can happen. That's your first time in Amsterdam, or your second time, or your third time. And you say to your partner today, oh my god, this is my dream city. Lovely weather. 365 days a year at this weather. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and you want to live here, you say, oh, I want to live here. You can live here. You can live here tonight if you want. You need only one thing. Deep pockets. If you want to live in the center, you need that deep pockets. Just to give you an example, for one of those four major canals, one house is for sale, 500 square meter. Have a look here. Oh, if you step out of the car, no daydreaming, eh? Always be aware there is water next to you. Bye bye. Oh, God. Yep, living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so always, eh? Be mind. If you park the car, Next to the water in Amsterdam, no daydreaming while you step out of the car, otherwise it's a very big step. So, but just to get back, 500 square meter, it's a big apartment, in one of those four major canals, stopped at the market, asking price 10 million euros. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, exactly. Okay, but that is top of the market, let's say an average apartment, because what happens nowadays, these entire buildings, they, what they did do, they divide them into several apartments. So let's say every floor is a single apartment, 50, 60 square meter, which is 530 square feet, a one bedroom apartment. If there is an apartment on the market, it will be sold in 48 hours. And the asking price of a 50 square meter apartment, 500 square feet apartment, in the center is 500,000 euros. Asking price, not selling price. If you, if you want to rent
job. There's a waiting list for a parking lot. The parking lot waiting list can take up to five years. Good text climate.
which is a lot. So the average wages are 32,000 euros. Of course, okay? You know, let's say you earn 100,000 euros, wages net 55,000. But we've got to see things that are first of all, social security, healthcare, everyone is insured, even the poor. And also our best, one of the best school systems in the world. So that was better later on something else about that. The front of us, we were talking I told you, was a refugee shop of the Amsterdam, the battleship, we had it in our place. The original one, unfortunately, we lost during a battle with the British, so we to England from the bottom of the sea. But there's also something else. The first flag, is the flag of Amsterdam, the free right access, stands for the three disasters of Amsterdam. Water, fire, and rats. Because the city got floated, the city got burned several times, and the black plague to the past. People died from those days. We've got two things more than people in Amsterdam. More bats and more rats. But just to get back here, yeah, where the text so, healthcare, everyone is insured in Ireland, even the poorest. If you don't get any wages, you are insured. And how? First of all, I pay 120 euro per month for health insurance, 100% insured, drafting, dentistry, you name it, physical therapy. But if I have no wages, I still have to pay every end of the month 120 euro. But two days before I have to pay, I get compensation by the government. On my account, 80 euros per month. So, it means for only 40 euros per month. 100% sure. If you break your leg, you'll be taken by the ambulance, got a surgery, um, uh, and a prescription for the pharmacist. All these bills will send directly to the insurance company. And the school system also. I went to the university, I did a master's degree. All my study time I get paid by the government. Yeah. I get every month net 250 euros. And while after I finish my study, they said, it's a gift. We can have it. If my parents were not in a financial position to support me, I could get a loan by the government all study time. 900 euro a month, 900 euro per month net. And I have to pay that back, of course. And there's an interest rate of one and a half percent with a payback time of 15 years. No. Huh? One and a half. Oh my and also something else, when you go to the States and the University to Harvard, you can pay for 60,000 euros per year. School fees. But we have to order 1,600 euros per year. Fixed. Every high school, every university, every school, every school, 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 Rate, rate. Yeah. A mortgage is a 30 years fixed 2%. Yeah. 
Does it invite you up? Yes, yeah, it's a point. It's a point. Yeah, see, there is a chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Linking up For to it. clear water, we all go to the bank. Uh, but it is clean water. <laughs> because, as I told you, everything is connected to the sewage. Directly. Nothing flushes to the ocean else. And we have got a few typical Dutch things. We've got the bikes. I mentioned it. The wooden shoes. Windmill in front of us. We are heading up to a traditional windmill. <laughs> And we also got, of course, the tulips and the flowers. But we also have some typical Dutch food. Cheese, for example. Or herring, croquettes. But we also have something else. Stroke bubbles. <laughs> Do you know what is stroke bubbles? Yeah. I've got a surprise for you. I have a drink. I want some stroke bubbles with you. It's a, it's a caramel biscuit. It's a little bit warm because of the sun. But drink one, share with everyone. It's caramel. Somewhere you go to every local supermarket, you can buy them everywhere. No, not in a special tourist souvenir shop or on the airport, it's five times more expensive. You see a people swimming here.
We had our last financial crisis in 2008. Does anyone of you know where I was in the first bubble, first crisis in Brooklyn? Huh? I think the first crisis in Brooklyn, where? Brooklyn. Huh? Greece, no. First crisis in the world? What was the first bubble, the first crisis in the world? Ah, yeah. oh, it is. It's a company. Uh, um, it was here. It was. What was it about? Um, the tra <laughs> it was about some. Some. Um, you were supposed to travel somewhere and bring something back, but I don't know what. No, happened. no, no, no. It, is, it was here. It was the tulip crisis. Oh. The flower crisis. Ever heard about the tulip crisis? Yeah. Yeah. A few hundred years ago, tulip bulbs. They were so rare, some colors. And the royals love them, people love them all over the world. Price went up like nuts. And uh, this one crisis. Yeah, it's all crisis. Uh, prices went up so high, they were like diamonds. And one should have bought at the same price as a whole canal house. No, why so? It's like, it's outrageous. Yeah, because, yeah, prices went up. Why are diamonds? So expensive because they are rare. Yeah, but so the bulbs yeah. at that time they were also rare. Some colors. But diamonds last forever. Yeah. Unlike tulips. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you know, uh, yeah. But people at that time, I'm gonna tell you later on. People at that time they don't care about paying tax or paying a lot of money. They were insane tax taxes at that time. But I will tell you later. On. But there's also something else in the bulbs. In 1944, it's already four years busy the Second World War. And the Germans had taken over Holland. And people were starving here. It was a very strong winter. And people had no money to buy food in the black market. And those people had to eat something else. To keep themselves alive. <laughs> what did they eat? <laughs> tulip bulbs. Yep, they eat tulip bulbs to keep themselves alive. Wow. And what happens? It's better because in Russia they were eating like cats and each other. Yeah. So what else happens is that. Our queen at that what? time, she escaped to Canada. And uh, Canada helped us, uh, helped us also to bring in food to Holland in the Second World War. And what we do every, day, every year, we send a park to the Gulf to Ottawa. There's a big park, and every spring, this whole park is full of tulips, which comes from Holland, as a thank for all the things that they've done for us during the Second World War. That's a little bit the story about the Dutch tulips. country in the world, except Holland. Where you can see traditional windmills, 
five minutes later, when it's something else. Hmm? It's not difficult to actually, but we're still here. It's a zoo. This is a fabric. We are handing up that to you. Take us on all the beautiful colors. You see the giraffe eating the... Oh my gosh, it's a giraffe. I saw just of elephants told them. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too. There's an elephant. <laughs> That's so uh, Don't have to go to the zoo now. <laughs> okay, this is the safari part of Amsterdam here. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And on the right side is a traditional warehouse street of Amsterdam, which was in, built in 1710. And as you can see on the shape of the windows, these were the warehouses because these wooden, uh, sorry, these iron hooks on both sides of the window were used to hang the doors on both sides. Nowadays there are no doors, but there are windows uh, and a fence in front. This is uh, because the French balcony. People don't have a real balcony here, so what they do. They meet each other outside on these wooden platforms a little bit further off. Children are swimming down there. And parents are watching, standing, reading something, or having dinner with each other. Many times you see people barbecuing or having dinner. And there's a very social, all the social things always. People are our nation is everyone is everything, for everyone is with each other. You've got 180 that you've got to be in
brakes. But yeah, this one is in 1710, and this whole street. It's more than 300 years old. And these are now apartments, but these were the warehouses because all the hooks on the top that you can see also.